This program is brought to you by the Center for a Sustainable Today. Free Geek started as a way to take the problems of e-waste going to the landfill and point that problem at the another problem, which is that people don't have access to computers, mm -hmm. and in our society, you absolutely need a computer. Yeah. Yeah. So we figured if people are throwing away all these computers and people need computers, why don't we figure out a way to refurbish these computers and get them into the hands of people who want them? This is Peak Moment. We are living at a peak of human innovation, information, wealth, and health. But we're also at a peak of population and consumption, with rising temperatures and declining resources fueled by cheap oil and gas. Peak Moment Television, bringing you examples of positive responses to energy decline and climate change through local community action. Hi, welcome to Peak Moment. I'm Jenea Donaldson. I'm at the building that has an unusual name and an organization that fits it, Free Geek. And my guest today is Allison Briggs, who's the Reuse Program Coordinator. Thanks for joining me. Well, thanks for having me. What is Free Geek? Free Geek is a nonprofit organization. It's a community technology center. We take yeah. computers from the public and other sorts of electronic gizmos, ranging from printers, scanners, old cell phones, um, any kind of thing that plugs into the wall. And what we do with it is we do two things. We make sure that it doesn't end up in a landfill and mm. that it's being processed responsibly. Um, and we also make sure that if it can be reused, we find a way to reuse it. Uh, That's kind of the uh. core of what Free Geek is, is that we take computers in particular and we give them out to the community. And Free Geek started as a way to take the problems of e-waste going to the landfill and point that problem at the Another problem, which is that people don't have access to computers, mm -hmm. and in our society, you absolutely need a computer. Yeah, yeah. So we figured if people are throwing away all these computers, and people need computers, why don't we figure out a way to refurbish these computers and get them into the hands of people who want them? How long has it been in operation? 10 years. This is our 10th Whoa, anniversary. Oh, that's pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. So how many, do you get a guess on how many computers have moved through your store, your shop? I'm not sure how many have moved over time, but I know um, that last year alone we recycled, not reused, just recycled 750 tons. Tons. And that we sent out into the community um, more than 2,000 commuters, whether it was through our volunteer programs or through one of our other programs. Well, why don't we jump in and just see how it works and, it's, and what your place is like. All right. Okay. So when I said, when we started was that Free Geek is a place that takes old computers and other things and tries to reuse them. And if we can't reuse them, we end up recycling them in an environmental, environmentally uh, preferable way. So what we're going to be doing on our short tour through the building is following the path of how something comes through the building. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, because <laughs> yeah, and it's happening right yeah, here as we're right talking here. about it. Right. So um, somebody's donating. Absolutely. Something we, here. We are in the receiving area right now. So what happens is that the public just um, pulls right up to the curb. We have a group of volunteers here who go outside and help meet the person who is pulled up. We help them unload their car. We bring all their stuff in. We get a nice tally of it, and we get them a tax receipt for it. Free. So you can see um, from all these shelves, we, we sort things initially. You know, little things going into all sorts of different boxes to be tested for further reuse or to be um, sent straight to recycling. But this is the kind of... This is the entryway for everything that comes through the building. And it's a busy, I mean, it's a hot spot. It's the I hot mean, spot. Yeah, it's like, here we go, here's something coming in. We are standing right now in a room right next to receiving where everything comes in. This room is where we test keyboards and mice and speakers. This is kind of a basic testing area. Um, we have some series of, you know, standards for what we're looking for, but pretty much are they alive? Is that really? Yeah, we're it? looking for if they're alive. We're looking for if they, they look good. That um, you know they're you know this is a, an area where volunteers work exclusively. Something I really would like to convey is just how much Free Geek is run by volunteers. We have over 650 active volunteers, meaning someone who has volunteered in the last month. And I mean, compare that to about 30 paid staff. That is a, a big ratio of volunteers really making this place work. And why do they why do they volunteer here? 
well, they earn a free computer. That is one of our main programs is that volunteers come in. There are two ways for them to access um, our our services. One is they really just want a computer and they don't they don't want to spend too much time here. They spend 24 hours. They volunteer in areas like receiving, helping unload people's cars or testing keyboards over here. And at the end of those 24 hours, they get a free computer, a class on how to use it, and a year of free tech support. Wow. 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 Yeah. That's such a deal. Yeah, that is, that is Big great. Big deal. We give away so many computers to the community that way. And if someone wants to learn a little bit more, as we're going to see later on in our tour, they can learn to build computers. We will teach them everything they need to know. I started here as a volunteer about four and a half years ago, knowing only how to turn my computer on and check my email, <laughs> and now I teach people how to refurbish laptops. So no previous knowledge necessary. That, and that's part of what I think is so exciting here is you are skilling people and you are empowering them at the grassroots with stuff that we've been told is is too technical for all us ordinary folks and that's i mean that's we need that across the board in our culture yep. and this is a great model for that i will never pay again to have my computer repaired i'll fix it myself <laughs> i love it so, i love it and and there's a lot of women folks like you uh-huh saying there are. that and we um we are happy to have people come here and volunteer only the 24 hours or we're happy to have them come and learn how to build computers and in the build program they eventually build one for themselves uh-huh so and we'll talk more about that when we get into the build room. But okay. for now, behind us is going to be the first stage of that build program. This is where um, computers come. As soon as they come in through the front door, they go through receiving and they're piled up here where we have oh, tons um, of computers. Tons of yes, computers. Yes. Um, we have uh, paid staff and volunteer instructors who are instructing volunteers to follow these very lovely flow charts we have created um, and they are evaluating these incoming computers to see if they're able to be refurbished or not. Okay, so your volunteers with some staff supervision are going mm -hmm. through all the steps, the checkout mm -hmm. steps to see everything about mm -hmm. what works and doesn't work in a yep. computer. Absolutely. Okay. And in the process, they are learning about vocabulary. They're learning about what the insides of computers looks like. They're learning um, basic troubleshooting. And they're also helping Free Geek because they are evaluating what is useful, reusable, and what is not reusable. So, what happens to a computer after the volunteers in the uh, evaluation area decide that it is either has potential for reuse or that it actually doesn't meet our specs, um, whether it's too old or it's just completely broken, what happens to those computers? Right. They come back here. We are right now in the recycling area, our warehouse. We have volunteers who are deconstructing all of the computers that have been deemed re recycled. Um, they're not reusable or refurbishable in any way. We have volunteers who are deconstructing other devices as well. We have, you know, that old wireless router that yeah, you knocked on the yeah, floor and yeah, it broke. Yeah. We, we'll take that apart here. We'll take apart um, printers. We have printers being tested and refurbished mm -hmm. and um, recycled over here. We take apart a lot of things. We, we don't take apart those big hulking monitors or big TVs because those contain some really nasty chemicals we don't want to touch. But we take apart nearly everything else just using simple hand tools. All that. Okay. All right. And this is all volunteers back here. We have a few staff people kind of coordinating the show, but really this is volunteers making they, free geek work. They just seem to make it so knowledgeable. I mean, I'm looking at these folks undoing the printers. It's like they know what they mm -hmm. are doing. And the, the people volunteering in this area are part of that 24-hour program okay. to earn a computer in 24 Four hours so no one comes in here knowing oh I can take apart a printer I can take apart a computer you learn all that here you, you ask the person next to you you ask the instructor um, it's it's a really open place we have I've seen three-year-olds in here and I've seen people who are you know 83 years old that's fabulous so that's great. so when you when they take apart the parts for the ones that can't be reused mm -hmm. what what happens to those okay. and what what kind of stuff do they separate them into I mean, I see you've got different bins back yep. here. So. so when they take apart a computer, we're looking for the different components to go to different recycling vendors who are going to do whatever kind of processing they do, shredding them, melting them. I don't exactly know, but what we do is we take apart things like plastic, 
metal, all different kinds of metal, you know, uh, aluminum, steel, mm -hmm. all sorts of things. We look for circuit boards that have gold on them. We look for memory, old memory sticks that have gold on them. We have all sorts of copper bearing materials, which is kind of a catch all for, you know, that old alarm clock radio um, or maybe your hair dryer or something oh, like wow. that. Um, but basically, what we're doing is we're separating the components so that when we send them onto a vendor, the materials in them can be reclaimed. And, and my understanding is that you've really chosen those vendors carefully, so they're doing, you make sure, absolutely. Um, it's extremely important to Freegy. In fact, it was one of the you know, founding tenets that we would only seek to do business with recyclers that could demonstrate to us that they were doing the right thing with these materials. They're not shipping them to China and just dumping them somewhere. They're, they're not just burying them in a landfill. We are, make sure that our vendors are doing the right thing. And we have recently become um, van qualified in East, East Stewards through the Basel Action Network. Okay, I haven't heard of this. Uh, they are really the, the top notch for ethical computer recycling. So we, we've been qualified with them as an e-steward. Congratulations. Hey. You've yep. been on that path a long time. We did. It took a long it's time. The rest of the world's catching up with you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So over here we have our advanced deconstruction area. We have all sorts of things like right here, this is a motherboard. This is what's inside of a computer. You'd have your processor right here. You'd have your memory slots going in over here. Um, and a whole lot of other stuff. Yeah. And like I said earlier, you know, I didn't know how to turn my computer, or I barely knew how to turn my computer on before I started volunteering here. And now I could probably tell you about every single component on here. And so when you say this is advanced deconstruction, what do people do, with, what do your volunteers do with this? Um, this is staff and um, volunteers are taking apart uh, materials, pulling off uh, gold bits or easily tear offable metal bit, other metal bits. It's just kind of making it so that we can um, the all the materials that can be reclaimed will be reclaimed. Okay. Okay. So kind of cleaning them up for recycling. Okay. We have in addition to the recycling end of our operation where we have volunteers deconstructing computers and all sorts of other electronic gizmos, we also store the computers that the volunteers in the evaluation area, those those folks just starting to learn about building computers, the ones that they evaluate as potentially reuseful, they come and wait back here on the shelves waiting for um, an advanced builder to come back and lovingly restore one of them. So we keep them here on the shelves. They're just you know, sorted by basic um, specs. They're missing most of their components inside mm -hmm. because one of the very first things we do in the evaluation area is remove the hard drive because data security is extremely important to us. So we want to make sure that those wonderful people who are dropping off their computers for us um, are are not becoming victims of identity fraud or anything like that, identity theft. So what do you do with those hard drives that might have it? Okay. We take the hard drives out, we look at them. If they're going to be uh, reused in any way, shape, or form, uh, one of the instructors takes them over to the testing area and they get put into a machine that wipes all the data off of them multiple times. Okay. Or if we look at the hard drive and say, oh, can't reuse this one, whether it's already been broken or whether it's just too, too old, we destroy it right there. Okay. I can show you the handmade contraption that one of our staff members has made to physically destroy the hard drives. Great. Okay. That's a lot of boxes. A lot of computers. Oh, wow. And monitors. Mm-hmm. So now we've left the warehouse and we're back in the evaluation area. And like I promised, here is the hard drive destroyer. Basically, if um, a hard drive is not able to be reused, we put it in here, we turn the crank, and we just drill a hole through all of the plates that are inside the hard drive, which is where all the data is stored. And then the hard drive, which is uh, no longer usable, gets taken apart for all the different components inside so that we can make sure that they're all recycled separately. Now that's serious security. Yes, it's very important to us. And anyone donating their computer or recycling their computer should always ask about data security. That's what happens important. to my hard drive? That's really important. Thank you. Thank you. I hadn't thought about that. What are these guys doing over here? Over here, they're learning vocabulary. Uh -huh. This is the hardware identification area. Um, 
We have um, instructors teaching people about what things are called, what they look like, where they go inside of a computer, just kind of preparing them so that they know how to properly evaluate the computer or whether it's going to be good or not. So this is like stage one. I mean, what is this called even before you go through mm -hmm. the flow charts? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Okay. All right, so we are standing right now in the advanced testing area. The advanced testing area is mostly powered by volunteers, and it's where we test all sorts of components. It's a kind of a place where people who are interested in learning more um, than our standard Learn to Build program can come and expand their knowledge. We have uh, testing of video cards, motherboards, memory, wireless devices, um, cell phones, all sorts of things are tested over here by volunteers. This looks like a lively spot. It I mean, the wires is. running all over and everything. One thing that Free Geek does is that we, uh, we work really hard to make sure that all the testing procedures, basically everything that happens here is really accessible and well documented. Because we like to have people feel empowered to, to learn things on their own and to just not have to be told constantly by someone else what to do. This is, Free Geek is a really great community for people who have a little bit of initiative and, and want to learn more for themselves. That's great. It looks like the doors just are open everywhere yep. for that. Fabulous. Okay, where else? Now we're going to enter the build room, the, the heart of Free Geek. build room, okay. Okay, so right now we are in the build room. The build room is kind of the heart of Free Geek in many ways. This is the final step of the Learn to Build Computers program for volunteers, and this is where all of the computers that Free Geek refurbishes, and then uh, well, it's the start of where all the computers are refurbished. So every com computer that goes out into the community, whether we sell it in our thrift store, whether a volunteer earns it through their volunteer time, or whether it goes out to a a nonprofit or community organization through our hardware grants program. Oh. Um, this is where that computer is built by volunteers. So the build, pro the heart of this. What is the vol well, How much time does it take? What are the volunteers to do it? What, what are, and what do they do? They just come and what do they do? Well, um, first of all, the build program is self-paced. There's no assigned amount of time that you spend learning anything. You, you take time. If you have some experience, it takes quicker. If you have no experience, it may take a little longer. It's entirely self-paced. And we really, really emphasize a peer-to-peer -peer learning mm. environment here. So ask the person next to you if you have a question. Learn from them. They may have been doing this a really long time. We have volunteers that stay in the build program for years. Wow. So there is a great deal of knowledge to be learned just, just in this room alone, just by asking the person next to you. And what do they do in here? Well, volunteers go through um, a checklist to install components. They're installing uh, hard drives that have been, been wiped. Um, they're installing memory. They're installing cards. They're putting it all together, testing to make sure everything is playing nicely with each other. And in the end, we have volunteers doing a quality control to make sure that Everything is working fine. Now you said that you know that, that you know this is where all your computers come from. Mm -hmm. So if somebody is involved in the build program, do they come and make one computer? What I mean, what's what does that entail? So the they come in the build room and they immediately are going to quality control five or six computers. That's the first step. And then once they've successfully done that and feel a little more comfortable um, with the computers, then they go on to build computers. They build six computers. Six. Five of those computers stay with Free Geek, and the sixth one they build goes home with the volunteer. Ah. And it's okay. those five computers that go to other volunteers in a 24-hour program. It's those computers, those five computers also go out to our thrift store where they're sold really inexpensively. Mm -hmm. Or as I mentioned a little bit ago, the Hardware Grants Program. Um, we are happy to give computers um, away to nonprofit organizations. It, we've given out thousands of computers that's pretty exciting. Yeah, it's, it's pretty, pretty exciting. wonderful. It sounds like your whole community has adopted this. I mean, you must know about that. How do how did your, you know, how do people learn about Free Geek? That's interesting. I think it would largely be word of mouth because Free Geek rarely advertises. So we give out. Um, the other day, I was standing at the front desk when a woman came in and said that Free Geek had donated a bunch of computers to her child's school for a computer lab. And so that's why she came to drop off her old computer. So there's all different ways that people hear about us, but mostly I think it's word of mouth. Great. So once people, you know, build, then what? When then where do they go? If a volunteer 
wants to learn more just beyond the regular build program, we have a lot of options for continuing their education. They can learn about building Macs. So for example, here we are in the Macs area. It's fun. We don't wow. get too, too many Macs in, um, and they are a little more complicated to work on, but any volunteer that is interested can potentially come in here and learn about Macintosh. And, and uh, what I want to ask is the Macs, you, what, when, when somebody gets their computer, mm -hmm. what kind of software is running on it? What kind of operating system? What's that? It's an excellent question. Because part of the reason that FreeGeek has been able to thrive for 10 years is because we use um, free and open source software. Open source meaning? Open source meaning, um, in a technical way, the, the source code is open to anyone who has the skill, the knowledge okay. to, to edit it. But really what it boils down to for FreeGeek is that it's free. Great. It means okay. that we can install um, Ubuntu, which is the operating system we currently use, um, onto our every computer that's here, our Macs, our desktop computers, our laptops, and it's free for us and it's free for whoever gets it at the end. You can install all sorts of programs free, you can um, edit it as you like, it's, it's free. So this is, I mean, this is truly the people's, yeah. the people's computers mm -hmm. that you're doing. One reason we really like using free and open source software is because it works really well with older hardware. So what enables our reuse is using the free and open source software. And what we really also love philosophically about it is that it's a collaborative project. Mm -hmm. So you have people who are really passionate about open source software and, and they on their free time out there in the world work to make the operating system a better place or a better thing. So Free Geek really loves that collaborative model and that's the way we function as an organization as well. We don't have an executive director here. We have a, a collective of 13 or 14 people wow. who um, work to make this organization run. And then we have a bunch of other people who also help to make it run. So you really are, I mean, you, that's, that's quite a different model of the organization, but I see it's a very different model in terms of your volunteer, mm -hmm. you know, massive volunteers. It's, um, I mean, you're cutting edge and not just using old computers, a lot of ways. Yeah, we, we like to be as democratic, um, as open and accessible a place as possible. That's why we love free and open source software. It's why we have volunteers in every single facet of the organization. And it's why we run, or why we operate our organization together. And at this point, I think we can go into the classroom. OK. So this is our classroom. This is where um, we have the class for the volunteers in the 24-hour program who they complete their 24 hours and then they get their computer and they get a class on how to use it. Because, you know, I mentioned we use the free and open source software. While it's extremely easy to interact with, I like to use the example that I taught my mother in three hours. Um, <laughs> but uh, not everyone is, is used to seeing it. So we, we offer a class on how to use it because what's the point of having a computer that is going to sit in your closet because you're afraid to use it. Right, right. So this room is where we have that class. We also have uh, about a dozen other classes that we offer, ranging from, I've never used a computer before, how do I get an email address, mm -hmm. to how to program in C. So Ooh. there's a variety of educational opportunities. All of our classes are free to volunteers. All right, so let's move on. I want to stop real quickly and show you all the completed computers that we have. In this hallway between the classroom and the laptop build area sits all the completed computers. These are the ones that build volunteers have built. Other volunteers have quality controls, and the instructors, who are also volunteers, have signed off on. Whoa. They come and they, they sit on these shelves and they wait to go to their final home. That's a lot of computers. It's a lot of computers. We have um, computers that, the nicest computers we get, that we get consistently of, that we can give away to everyone, those go to our volunteers. Um, sometimes we have the outliers that are really high end that we, we don't have enough to give away to everyone, and those go to our thrift store. So, and that's what all these computers over here are. They're, they're all done and they're waiting to go to their new home. Okay. So, uh, we will end our, end our tour in the thrift store where I'm sure it is going to be extremely busy.
Yeah, I see here a library and computers that people can work on. Yeah, when volunteers are uh, taking a break, they are. we have computers set up so they can check their email, get a bus schedule, do whatever it is that they want to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's really quiet. Actually, we're here at a quiet time, so this is a great time to be here. This is our thrift store. This is um, the place where uh, all sorts of odds and ends get sold. This is the place where uh, refurbished computers get sold. Uh, you can look around and see all sorts of things. CD players and all kinds of gadgets. Mm -hmm. we, we sell completed systems, like they're completely built. We also sell parts. Uh, we also sell just little doodads for everything. This is a great place to come if you are a hobbyist or a tinkerer. This is also a great place to come if you just need a computer and you just don't have time to volunteer. You can get a whole computer system here. Computer, monitor, speakers, mouse, keyboard for under $100. Really? Mm -hmm. So affordable. Mm -hmm. That computer right there, 40 bucks. Huh. I bet this is a busy place and a lot of stuff comes in and goes out of here Absolutely. Quickly. Absolutely. So, so that actually is the question. Where does Free Geek get its funding? So Free Geek is a little unique in the sense that it does not receive any external funding. We are completely financially self-sufficient. Our income is uh, divided up among the thrift store. We also receive uh, cash donations from the public when they drop off their old computer and say, here, thank you, here's $5, I appreciate what you're doing. Okay. Um, and we also receive income from our uh, recycling end of things. So when we ship out those copper bearing materials, when we ship out those plastics, we get a little bit of income. Yeah. It's been, Free Geek has been financially um, self-sufficient for the past uh, two years, I believe. Okay. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, it looks to me like the crowd's now appearing here yep. in the thrift store. Mm -hmm. He's a true geek. He's true geek. So, okay. Let's head on outside. This has been a fabulous tour and, and a really exciting place to be. So thank you for that. So anything we haven't covered that you want to share with us? No, I don't think there's anything we haven't covered, but I, I would just like to end by saying Free Geek is ultimately a reuse organization. We, we think it's silly to have computers just be recycled when they can be reused. Because reuse is really at the top of the sustainability hierarchy. I mean, you've got perfectly good computers that do a phenomenal job at what most people use a computer for on a day-to-day -day basis. And, and along the way, it's empowering people, educating people, keeping things out of the landfill. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of ancillary parts to that. Absolutely. You gotta be excited to work here. It is a wonderful thing to work at Free Geek. Thank you for this tour. It's been wonderful, and I hope there are a lot of organizations that are gonna spring forth from this. Excellent, well, thank you for coming. You're watching Peak Moment. Locally reliant living for challenging times. This is really geeky locally reliant living. You're watching Peak Moment. Join us next time. <laughs>